Hello, this is Ruza Özçelik. Now, today I will present you ensemble learning for novel drug target affinity prediction. This work is developed in a collaboration of Boğaziçi University of Turkey and data and analytics chapter of Roche, Switzerland. Here I acknowledge the contributions of Alper, my co-authors Alperen Ba, Berk Atıl, Arjun Özgür and Elif Özkırım. We know that drug discovery is famous for being a long and expensive process. And researchers over the years develop mo models, methods to navigate through this long process in, in a smarter way. More precisely, researchers develop affinity prediction models in order, to, uh, in, in order for fast identification of compound protein pairs. And most of these affinity prediction models relied on machine learning because machine learning allowed us to ask the following question. Given a set of ligand and protein pairs with this, these affinity scores, what would be the affinity between this compound and this protein? Here, compound and protein can be novel or not. And now let's investigate and name each of each scenario. For instance, if compound and both of the compound and the protein is already known, in other words, some interaction information we have about these molecules, then we call these molecules as warm biomolecules or a warm test set. If the ligand is novel to us, then we call this ligand as a cold ligand. And if the protein is novel to us, then we call this protein as a cold protein. If both of the ligand and the protein is novel for the model, then we call these biomolecules as called biomolecules. Over the years, developed machine learning models could perform successfully on the warm biomolecules. However, their performance was challenging on the cold ligand and cold protein test set. In other words, the, the cases where either the ligand or the protein is novel for the model. If both of the biomolecules are actually novel biomolecules, then the challenge is further amplified for the model. And all of these cold cases are quite important to us because frequently scientists develop novel biomolecules that, that, are, that is associated with no interact, interaction information. And thus, we would, like to be, we would like to have successful models on these cold setups too. We know that the performance drop for these cold test sets uh, come from the data set biases. And we define data set biases as the outstanding patterns in the data set that misguide drug target affinity prediction models. To exemplify, the, acti the actives and decoys in a drug tract interaction data set can have apparent discriminatory chemical properties. For instance, if the number of hydrogen bond donor or acceptor uh, counts or the molecular weights are significantly or apparently different for the actives and decoys, then the machine learning models can identify these patterns and actually exploit these patterns to maximize their objective over the training set. Or machine learning models can actually infer the identity of a biomolecule from their smiles or protein for, from the chemical and protein representation and then produce fixed predictions for these uh, biomolecules. In both of these cases, machine learning models fail to learn any binding mechanics, but instead they memorize some dataset biases and thus they fail to generalize for novel biomolecules. This problem is prevalent in the natural language inference task as well. In the natural inference task, the goal is to label a, a sentence pair as contradicting or not. We, uh, the researchers noticed that uh, most of the contradicting sentence pair in the data sets can contain actually the word not, and these cause the models to uh, memorize this pattern and and uh, take shortcut predictions to uh, predict the label of a sentence page. So these models could not uh, generalize to real life uh, cases as well. And the proposed solution was to learn and avoid these dataset biases. 
during training of the uh, natural language inference models. Here, we also uh, do the same, but for the attractive into prediction model. We developed device DTA, which is an ensemble learning approach and developed to boost prediction, especially for the novel drug targets by novel, drug, novel drugs and targets. Device DTA ensembles weak and strong learners for prediction and uses the weak learners to devise strong drug target defined prediction models and then uses the strong learner as a standalone predictor. Now let's dig in each dig into each of these cases. In the weak learners, the idea is to uh, the idea is catch the data set biases with weak learners because if the data set biases are that outstanding, then the weak learners can actually learn these patterns. And we designed two weak, le two weak learners in order to learn two different data set bias sources. Namely, we designed IDDTA to identify chemical identifier biases. I IDDTA represents the biomolecules with one hot encoding vectors. Both DTA, the other weak learner, uh, uh, aims to catch the chemical work biases in the training set. And both DTA represents the biomolecules with back of words representations. Both of the weak learners uses regression trees for prediction as it's a simple algorithm. Then we train the weak learner in order to quantify data set biases. For the training, we uh, train the weak learners with five, cro fi with five fold cross validation and then repeat this procedure 10 times. When the cross-validation is repeated 10 times, each interaction is actually uh, become present in a validation set 10 times. And thus, each interaction is associated with 10 mini validation error measurements. We then compute the median of these 10 measurements and call the median as the inverted bias coefficient. Here, the idea is that if the inverted bias coefficient is high, then it's a challenging interaction for the weak learner, and thus it is a less biasing example, or it is a more informative example, more informative sample uh, for the strong learner. We use this information in the strong learner training. And now let's discuss our strong learners, LMDTA, PPDTA, and DeepDTA. DeepDTA is a work already available in the literature. Deep DTA uses character level con convolutions over smiles and amino acid sequences. Whereas BP DTA replaces the character level convolutions in Deep DTA with word level convolutions. LM DTA, on the other hand, uses fixed pre trained language model embeddings. In the bias DTA, all of these models leverage the inverted bias coefficients to guide their training. We design experiments with two data sets, which are BDB and Kiba. Here, Kiba is a kinase data set, whereas BDB contains proteins from different families. Thus, the, the cold biomolecules in kinase data sets, in Kiba data set, is still relatively similar to training proteins compared to BD, cold proteins of BDB. We design five different biomolecule splits to obtain different warm and cold scenarios and evaluate uh, our models with R square and concordance index. We then calculate the improvement due to the biasing for each model weak learner pair. We observe that the biasing improved performance on almost every setup for all models. Noteworthy, the performance increase is not only observed on the cold test sets, but also observed in the warm test set, even though the bias DTA aimed to increase the performance for cold biomolecules. We also observed that performance increase is amplified in BDB. We relate this with the fact that BDB being a more diverse data set compared to Kiba and thus having more challenging, uh, they, uh, more challenging cold test sets for non-debiased models. To sum up, predicting affinity scores between novel biomolecules is challenging for all models. And this challenge is due to the fact that dataset biases exist and they need to be avoided. 
The bias DTA can identify and avoid these biases with the proposed training procedure. And all models we experimented with leverage these debiasing procedure to boost their prediction performance. And we are happy to share that the approach proposed here in the bias DTA is, appli is applicable to almost every DTA prediction model, not only the models that use smart sequences and amnesty sequences. Thank you for listening.